Greetings, fellow humans. Today we're doing part two of a robot theme series where we make a robot cake. In part one, we made a robot pinata, and if you wanna check that out, you can see it at this link here. For the robot cake, though, we're gonna do a two-tiered square cake. So the bottom is going to be eight inch, two layers, which is gonna be made of cookies and cream cake, and then the top tier is going to be six inch, and we're gonna actually make that of Rice Krispies because this tier is actually suspended on the neck of the robot. And so we want to avoid catastrophe at all costs and I have a lot of speed bumps in my neighborhood, so let's try to avoid that. So anyways, let's get started, guys. The first thing I'm gonna do is roll out white fondant to make the base of the eyes. And then I'm gonna make one of those eyes look like a gear. In order to do that, I'm using a square fondant cutter and then I'm taking a fondant tool that's square to get more of that angular shape. Here I'm just using letter cutters to cut out my nephew's name and that's gonna go on the console front panel of the robot. And here I'm just adding yellow gel color to make the yellow fondant and this is the top of the robot and I'm just smoothing it out, rounding it out. This goes on the head of the robot where the antennae are gonna go. And then I'm rolling out some gray fondant that I'm actually gonna wrap around a straw and that will be what I will use as the antennae. And then I'm just smoothing that out and then I just cut it in half. And then here I'm rolling out some more gray fondant to make the legs. And then I have the cake pan here just to kind of get a sense of scale because I don't want to make it too big. And then I also roll out the arms as well. And then I'm just shaping them here so they dry the shape that I want and then I texture them with the fondant tool. And then I bring out my favorite extruder to make a ribbon that I am going to apply to the legs. And then I'm gonna roll out some more yellow fondant that I'm using for the hands, and they look like Lego hands, little, little cuffs. And then I roll out two balls for the feet that I just flatten slightly with a fondant roller and I texture. And then I use a skewer to attach the legs to the feet And then I'm just cutting out the part that I'm gonna use for the shoulders and then I mold them around a fondant cutter. Anything will really work. And then I'm just cutting out with the circular fondant cutters, the iris and the pupils of the robot's eyes. And then here I'm rolling out some black fondant to make the center panel that's like the LCD screen for the robot where the name is gonna go. and then my good old extruder <laughs> to make a EKG. I can't say the word, EKG, it's not even a word, it's just letters, EKG line, goodness gracious. And here, bringing out the fondant extruder, again, using white fondant to make the mouth. And here I'm just cutting out a really quick letter two. Okay, so here's the really messy part, guys. So this is me making the Rice Krispies, it's three parts, Rice Krispies to two parts marshmallow. It's really messy. <laughs> Just the best thing that you can do is make sure to grease your hands. If it is messy and it's frustrating, you're, you're doing it right. You just kind of have to massage it in there and press it down really, really good to get it to form to that cake pan. And then I'm doing the same thing to make the ears of the robot. And I'm just using a quarter cup to model it into that. And of course this does not have butter because we want it to be pretty solid. And then here before the Rice Krispie dries, I definitely wanna make sure I make a hole in there or else it's gonna be really hard to do later. And then I'm just shaving my Rice Krispies to make it as square as possible and as even as possible. And I even take a little cheese grater to just kind of refine that edge just a little bit. And then here I am just applying some icing to really fill in those holes. I don't really do it to the whole entire Rice Krispie, just like the big parts, the big crevices. And now I just ice my Rice Krispie just like a cake, just as usual, using my fat wide tip. And then I smooth it down with my favorite green scraper. You know, it's got that flexibility to it. You wanna break it in. And then of course I do my papering because that's, thank God for papering or else 
I would not be able to make these cakes look smooth. Um, really nice when you're working with buttercream and you don't have fondant. And here I'm just attaching the ears with the skewer and I'm using actually my scraper to press against the board so I don't actually have to put pressure on the cake so I can drive that skewer in without causing damage. And then it fell off <laughs> because I thought that the icing was wet enough, but I just apply some fresh icing and it sticks just fine. So just make sure to do that. And here I am covering the ears with buttercream icing and I'm gonna smooth those down as well. It's probably a lot easier to cover these with fondant, guys, than to, to kind of ice these and try to smooth it down, but eh. I just like uniformity, I guess. And then I'm just papering it down, too. So what I do like about using buttercream is a lot of people don't love the taste of fondant, so this just kind of maximizes the part that people find tasty or edible. Okay guys, so I'm stacking my eight inch cookies and cream cake and I'm just shaving it down to make it pretty even. I don't really do a great job. <laughs> I do a decent job, I think. But I also use a cheese grater to kind of make it even. So one issue with gluing the center dowel is you cannot move it. So if by icing the cake, things feel a little bit off center, there's not a whole lot you can do about it. So unfortunately things don't look perfectly centered. And it was a price that I was willing to pay for transport security. Because did I mention that I do not like speed bumps? And as you can see here, I forgot to fill the, <laughs> fill the cake. Um, so I'm doing the crumb coat here, but I'm gonna actually have to take that top layer off and fill it. I would caution everyone to not forget to fill their cakes, but I feel like I'm alone on this one. All right, so I fixed it. <laughs> I filled the cake, crisis averted, and then I just finished crumb coating the cake. And I feel like square cakes are are hard to ice. I prefer the rounds. It's just hard to make it look right, like any little mistake, and it really shows whether it's uneven or if it's just not particularly solid or crisp. Uh, but I do my best. I end up kind of manufacturing an edge with my scraper to give that sort of crisp look. But again, it's not perfect. And I think if you really wanted it to be perfect, covering in fondant might help or you just have to be better at icing than, than me. <laughs> and then of course I go in with the papering just to smooth everything down. And now I'm making the neck portion, which I'm actually gonna make from cardboard and I'm using six inch cake boards and I'm just cutting them. And then I'm taping those boards together and then I'm just covering them in fondant. So after having made the cake, I definitely recommend to actually try to use more cake boards than I did. I feel like the neck was a really important dramatic feature of the cake and a lot of our structural decisions were based off of this feature. And so I think it just wasn't prominent enough, it wasn't noticeable enough, so I definitely recommend making it longer. And now I'm just airbrushing the cake, like a sky blue color. and. There's really nothing to it when it comes to airbrushing. Basically, if you, depending on the opacity that you want for the cake, if you want it to be lighter, then you stand further back, and if you want it to be darker, more intense, you get closer. But not too close, of course, to blow a hole in the cake. You don't want to do that. I love airbrushing cakes. I just find them so much fun. Okay, guys, so now I am doweling the cake. I'm using bubble tea straws for the support. I'm using four of them to support the neck and then the top tier. And then I'm actually using a paper towel so I can gently push it down a little bit, guide it through without causing any damage to the top. And now I'm just rolling out um, some more gray fondant to do sort of the trim portions of the robot. And this is not perfect again. Like when you're doing things that are supposed to be straight, it's very clear when they're not straight. Uh, but I did my best. And I don't know why, but the fondant was just drying super quickly, so I had to like, I was trying to cheat and like roll out all of the fondant at once and cut it, but I had to end up recutting everything in the moment. And then I'm just using a piping tip to make the little 
bolts, which I end up applying to the cake all around. And here I'm just applying all the fondant pieces that I made beforehand, the shoulders, uh, I'm applying the antennas to the head, the arms. Now I'm applying the eyes and I'm using again paper towel so that I don't cause damage and I can press it in there. And then I'm adding some icing to back the mouth so it stays. And then here I'm using the icing to glue down the fondant letters and the EKG line, which I break. <laughs> but that's fine. And then I just do the little hard accent too. Nah. Nah. And everything falls off. <laughs> All the letters fell off. What the heck? What is this? So I do end up reattaching the letters with a little bit of wet icing <laughs> and it all turns out fine and I make a couple of edits and a couple of additions, but this is pretty much the final cake, guys. So it doesn't look quite as pristine and crisp as the reference image, but it has the same sort of vibe. Well, anyways, guys, I hope that motivates you to try your luck at a robot cake or any other cake. But until next time, guys, happy Miss Cakin. Bam bam bear when the bear day.